Uh, yes, correct. Okay, cool. I also have Loom uh, if you need me to also record on my end or something. Uh, it should be fine. Uh, I've got it on uh, QuickTime. It's, uh, Sweet. It hasn't filmed yet. Not going to But anyway, uh, we are recording now. Uh, so welcome one and all to another great edition of Dev and Tell. So if you didn't know, Dev and Tell is a 30-minute window for members of the DAO to showcase something they're passionate about or have been working on. This could be an awesome project you've been working on, demonstrating unit testing best practices, automation goodies, smart contracts, how to structure a project, etc. Basically, if you got a passion for something, this is your opportunity to share with the community. And today, I am happy to introduce to you uh, uh, Hans, who is going to be showing us his project uh, called Web3 VOD. Hans, uh, over to you. Thanks, Narb. Uh, first off, uh, apologies if I sound weird. Fun fact, yesterday I tested positive for COVID, so uh, feeling a little down right now, but uh, I've been thinking about this the entire week, so uh, I'm, I'm super excited to kind of show you guys um, kind of what I've been playing around with. Um, so let me share my screen. Can you guys see my screen? Yes, sir. <clears throat> okay. Um, so I would uh, sort of characterize this as less a uh, particular project and more just my learnings uh, within the Web3 space um, and just kind of me playing around with uh, random stuff. So apologies if nothing's particularly polished or uh, coherent in any way. Um, but yeah, so let's get started. So. Uh, the core idea is to let, so I was always interested in microtransactions, um, and traditionally that's been super hard to do because, well, you know, uh, most people pay with credit cards, credit cards have big fees, um, and microtransactions are super hard. Um, however, with crypto, um, and web three, that kind of changes the model on certain things. And so things that you normally wouldn't necessarily be able to charge for like articles etc um is now possible with web3 and in particular i was interested in how creators can monetize you know the small videos that they do you know people who put maybe educational videos um maybe you know indie artists who make uh you know small uh videos for their schools or projects etc like what are ways that they can monetize um their own videos so here i have um, by the way, all the videos that you'll see uh, in, in this uh, recording, I've gotten um, from <clears throat> the public domain, um, so no worries there. So um, in this case, I'm a creator. Um, I'm Popeye the Sailor. I don't know if you guys remember this cartoon way back when. It was really popular in the, I think, 30s or 40s or something. Um, but for this example, uh, I'm, I'm a creator. I make this really awesome cartoon. This is my website. And um, essentially, I want to be able to let people come to my website, take a look at my videos, and then, you know, uh, unlock them to watch them. Um, so in this case, uh, I'm signed in as a, I guess a random user right now. Um, and it's pretty straightforward. Uh, I can just hit unlock. No, sorry. Sign into my wallet real quick. And then it'll ask me if I want to approve the transaction. Um, and then there it is. Um, <clears throat> so that's a really simple, this is sort of the crux or the whole genesis of this entire project, basically gating videos um, and then having, being, allowing people to come in, connect with their wallet and then uh, watch them. And I'll explain uh, how this works. Um, so videos are actually kind of interesting. Um, and I think within the last like decade or so, um, being able to stream videos has become a lot simpler. Um, and a big part of the lift that's happening is through a protocol that Apple developed way back in, I think like 2010, called HLS, which is HTTP live streaming. And this is important because um, previously, if you wanted to do um, nice quality video streaming, you'd need to set up like a video stream, uh, video server. Um, that can, you know, uh, rate limit essentially the, the packets that are going to the client so that the, uh, the client isn't overwhelmed with like the entire file of the video, but the protocol, this HLS protocol is really nice because what you can do is you can take one big 
video, right? And then chop it up into a bunch of tiny, smaller video pieces, and then essentially point uh, the video player, most modern video players right now, video JS, J JW player, you can just literally point that the player to the manifest file that's created by chopping up all those little videos. And the protocol itself is responsible for automatically um, changing the resolution of the of the person's uh, video based on their connection and their mobile type. And I'll give you an example of like what that looks like. So here is, uh, this is I, this is a uh, app called Pinata, but it's like basically an interface over IPFS. Um, so if you can see here, I'll show you what this looks like. So this is the original uh, file. And then what this protocol does is again, chops it up into a whole bunch of different resolutions and you know, um, bit rates, et cetera. And then what you do is you just point the video player essentially to the manifest file, this master file, and uh, and everything is just good to go. Um, and because you're dealing with just a whole bunch of different files, like any CDN or in this case, IPF, any decentralized storage is a great way to like work with video. Um, so in this case, I already prepared um, this video for uploading. Um, using the command line on my end. However, um, I think what you could also do to sort of automate the process and continue the decentralization, decentralized train is you could prompt the user for the video, and then you can actually use a service like LivePeer. So maybe some of y'all have heard of LivePeer. Um, they basically, they do you know live streaming, uh, decentralized live streaming. However, they have uh, a pretty cool transcoder. Uh, that you can use that harnesses that decentralized uh, network that they have. You basically uh, point your video to them. They'll transcode it. They'll chop it up uh, into however you however you want it to be, and then uh, you can take all those little files, upload it into IPFS, and then um, take the CID, put it, uh, upload it or uh, point point to it, and then set a price. So in this case, let's do. 10 cents USD. Hopefully that works. Uh, hold on, it'll ask me. Oh, oops. Actually, let me, before I do that, let me switch uh, personas. Let me switch back to the creator. Uh, and then we go back to the home, and you can see that the video is uploaded um, and ready to go. Um, so I'm right now using this Solana network to do everything. Um, and I think my my biggest reason for that is uh, I just really like the L1 integration. Um, I think it's really hard right now to figure out how to work with L2 on Ethereum right now. Um, and even though you know Solana is going through a little bit of a dark time, um, I did like, at least for this particular prototype, I really did like it for this. Um, so, so what do we have? So we have the creator. The creator can upload their video essentially to IPFS, um, and they can set sort of a gate around it, and then people can come in and they can uh, pay a small amount, and then they can essentially unlock it and watch it. And it can be a cool monetization. Uh, vehicle for the creator, but we can actually take this one step further. And to to highlight that, I want to switch personas yet again. So the first persona was someone coming in to buy. The second persona was a creator itself who uploaded a new video, a uh, hall in one. A third persona that we're going to introduce um, is uh, a person called who runs Cartoon Land, um, and uh, so. As you know, the internet has a bunch of really vibrant niche communities. And so you can imagine there could be one community um, that's devoted all maybe to retro cartoons or just cartoons in general. And typically the way these, you know, websites make money is, <clears throat> excuse me, um, they have these, you know, scammy ads on the side or, you know, uh, whatever weird janky ways you currently make money in the web two land. But what if we could do a little bit better? Um, what if you could, what if this person, in addition to, you know, providing, you know, a forum for their members to talk news about them, they also provided value in the form of offering the videos themselves to their users on their website. 
Now, traditionally, that's been that's a really tough thing to do. Licensing in general um, is a really hard problem um, because not only one, do you have to get in touch with the either the creator or their agent or whatever. You have to negotiate how the licensing works. Then you have to figure out how you need to get their files over to your server and make sure that the quality assurance is there, et cetera. But what happens if that was way easier to do? What happens if, you know, Cartoon Land, let's see Carol runs Cartoon Land and Carol's like, you know what? What happens if I went over to one of my favorite um, cartoon creators and let's say they had a library, right? Of all their videos. And what if I could just copy and paste a little piece of code and here we go and then i could actually just sh i could get the videos directly onto my website and, and and show them to um my users and this is cool for a number of reasons one it's great for the user uh, especially if cartoon land keeps track of everything that you know, Popeye does, they're always up to date. So they're the expert on this. So for the user's perspective, they just need to come to one place and ensure that they'll always have the latest cartoons. Um, I'm going to switch back to Alice real quick um, and show you guys something. So Alice switching my, by the way, how cool is it that because it's like a shared database, et cetera, that just by, uh, the the site already knows which one has been unlocked alice had already unlocked this one on the creator's website date to skate and then this is the only one that she hasn't seen yet um so she'll come in here she's like oh my gosh this is awesome there's a new cartoon um so she goes ahead unlocks it approves a transaction and then she can watch it but i want to show you guys something real quick uh this one We're going to wait for the transaction to confirm real quick. There we go. Okay. Um, so this shows uh, sort of the balance changes that happened uh, because of the transaction. And uh, what's cool about this particular one is... Um, so the, the, the top uh, account that you see here, this address represents Alice. So you can see her balance went down. She paid this amount to um, get the, to, to watch the video. Um, you can ignore this one. This is just a record creation. Um, this one, this 99RH is the creator. So you see their balance went up because they got paid for it. And then this one you see down here is FJQC. Their balance went up too. And the way I've structured the contract or the program essentially is that publishers can, can automatically get a portion of, uh, of, of the cut. I think it's like 20% or 10% that I've just kind of hard coded into the contract. Um, so you can see that um, this is a great way for publishers, uh, or it can be a great way for publishers to make money. Um, super easy, permissionless, as long as the creator is open to uh, you know, decentralizing their content and making it super easy for publishers to essentially almost do the marketing for them and let lessen the the onus of marketing and getting users from from the creator side like i think this is an incredible way for publishers to make money and my hypothesis is that you know if more creators decide to do this you know we're going to see hundreds if not thousands of like mini netflixes which is I think net positive, as long as the content is decentralized and you can find the content basically on any publisher instead of, you know, how it is currently with like Hulu and Netflix where content is essentially locked to a platform. Um, this is net, net, net positive for literally everybody in the, in the ecosystem. We can take this the one step further. Um, I'm going to show you guys one more thing. Um, so Alice just unlocked this video. Uh, mm -hmm. she watched it, she loved it. And she's like, oh my gosh. You know, uh, my friend Bob would love this video too. So what she can do is she can, you know, you know, copy the link to the video, paste it, um, and she sends it to Bob. And I'm going to now switch over to Bob real quick. <clears throat> and uh, uh, Bob's like, Bob's like, okay, cool. Alice sent me this recommendation. I'm gonna watch it. So he unlocks the video. 
then I want to show you guys the transaction <clears throat> details. Um, so we'd already talked about the creator making money. We talked about the publisher making money, but um, just to you know, tie in everything all the way through, even the end user um, can make money. So um, 99RH was a creator, they made money. Um, the publisher, which is FJQ, made money. And you can see that this new account, GLX, which is Bob, also made money. And so again, I had structured the contract where there's a revenue share between the publisher right now, as you can see, it's a 50% split um, between the publisher and the user. So this incentivizes users of like uh, of websites and platforms to like go out and bring more other users into the fold. Um, and this is again, incredible because it's so hard to do this in web two land, but like it's just native within web three land and literally everybody's incentives are aligned in this, you know, the creators incentivize to make great content, a publishers incentivize to like, you know, be the expert, find the content, aggregate the content. Right. And then the end user is incentivized to like, you know, share it because, you know, right now it's fun to share stuff with your friends, but like, there's no real, you know, you don't really get anything out of it. I just like feel, feel goodsies. Um, but like now you can actually get, you know, essentially paid to, to be a mini influencer among your friends. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of the, uh, wrap up of kind of what I've been kind of playing around with. Um, so again, I apologize for my deep ramblings, but hopefully you guys kind of got a sense of like what I was working on. Um, and I'm happy to answer any questions you have. Hans, this was awesome, man. Uh, you said it, it wasn't polished, but man, it, it looked pretty polished to me. Uh, I have a few uh, questions. Uh, so around um, unlocking the video. So mm -hmm. if, if a user uh, yeah. unlocks a video one time, do they have access to that forever? Or is it like yep. time based? Oh, forever. Nice. Yeah, it's forever. I'm sure you can structure the contract where it could be trial only, etc. But right now it is a records on the blockchain, um, you have access to it forever. Awesome. Awesome. And basically, the uh, the reason you, you, you chose Solana as your uh, chain of choice was for <coughs> um, the the speed factor and the low transaction yeah. fees, correct? Yes, that's yeah, correct. Got it. Got it. Uh, yeah, that that like I said, this this is fantastic. Uh, does anybody else have any questions for, for Hans? Hey, I'll... Go ahead, dude. I'll go after you. I was, it was just a random thought as you were talking about that. I, I, I was thinking, um, how, how, do you, how would you guess you'd implement like a trial? Would you um, take the transaction um, time and then like make uh you know add however many seconds to the the date and say you know as long as it is not exceeded this time you know it's still valid you know with like a um uh you know i can't remember what what it is that um does that in solidity but you know what i'm talking about yeah yeah um i'm not super familiar with solidity uh but essentially i do understand what you're saying i think yeah you would essentially have the timestamp of when the transaction occurred and then you do a check every time, at least I think you could just do a check every time the user fetches that record down um, and say, okay, the time now is above 30 days, you know, two months, whatever. Um, if it's less than that, your, your access is golden. If it's above that, then trial, uh, then of course you have to pay again or something. Um, I hope that answers your question. I, I'm, again, I'm not yeah, super no. familiar with Solidity, yeah. but that sounds right. Thanks. Hey, I, I think this is super cool. Um, especially I've thought about this for like, for like uh, news articles and things like that. But I guess my question, um, so I'm not like an IPFS um, expert, but my question has to do with like the content gating. Yeah. Um, so if, 
if I technically, if I know the CID for yep. like content, I can just go look at it directly, right? I'm not saying I wouldn't pay for like curation <laughs> or convenience or anything like that. I'm just double checking that I understand that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I was waiting. I was waiting for someone to ask that question. That's an okay. excellent question. So the short answer is that is correct. Um, in IPFS land, uh, everything is public. So as long as you have this, um, then you know. Uh, how to access this video. You can easily point your video player to this and you can just set up your own website and watch it for free or offer it for free to others. And so that is the one limitation right now. I'm currently looking for ways to content or like to do access control on IPFS. I haven't found any interesting solutions. So my thinking, my workaround thinking is that, oh, okay. So the first work, the first way to think about it is you, you encrypt everything in, in here. And then you'd need to figure out a way to do um, essentially multiple public keys can, you know, decrypt the same private key to all of this stuff, which I have no idea how to do. Um, the other way to think about it is, okay, you just leave it, you just leave it out here to the public, but you offer additional incentives to maybe unlock the video. And the way I was thinking about it is maybe if you actually pay for the thing, maybe you get an NFT, right? Maybe the creator mm -hmm. offers NFTs, just an extra incentive, or maybe you offer social tokens. So if the creator has Popeye tokens, you say, hey, you buy some of this, I'll give you a hundred Popeye tokens, and maybe the value of those go up. Um, so I don't have a great answer for you because that is a good question. No, I don't I, know, yeah. So, so to be honest with you, I honestly don't even think you need it. Um, because there's tons of free content today. Like, I don't know if you watch Twitch, but like tw you can watch people for free on Twitch and people still subscribe and support creators. And there's something to be said about, you know, curation and convenience. Like, especially if it's a, a price point that like, <laughs> I don't like, I'm willing to pay, you know, at like a dollar, five dollars, whatever my price point is to save yeah. me the hassle of having to do that. Plus, like you said, like it's, you know, there's creator support plus like, creators probably can figure out, you know, who their top video buyers are and offer mm -hmm. incentives to their community and things. Like I, I honestly don't even think you really need the gatekeeping. I was just, it was more of a technical question. Um, oh yeah, no, it's, it's yeah. a great question. It's something that I think about too. So I'm glad someone else thought about it as well. Yeah, I think this is awesome. Uh, what are your plans for it? And uh, is anyone else working on anything similar that you know of? <clears throat> Um, my plans for this, uh, I don't honestly didn't have very much, very many plans outside of this. I just wanted to, uh, this is my first blockchain project, to be honest. Um, I, I'd done a basic NFT contract on Solidity beforehand, uh, but it's basically just copy pasting the millions of tutorials out there. This one, I tried actually going a little bit deeper. Um, so I didn't really think about, I would go that much further with this, um, so that, that I, I don't know. In terms of who else is working on something like this, video, I can't think of anyone. I know the music NFT space is really hot. I don't know how they're doing it. I assume it's just issuing NFTs. Um, there's no NFT involved with here. Um, yeah. Okay, cool. Thanks. And in that same vein, uh... Is the code uh, open source, or can anybody can anybody come and contribute to it, or are you keeping it uh, private for the moment? <laughs> no, the uh, it, it's it's on my it's in a private. I'm absolutely happy to open source it. I'm uh, an awful awful developer, and therefore, if it, I, I'm just so scared that if I as soon as I open it up, people will come into my house and point and laugh at me. But um, I'm happy to do that. I, it's whatever. Um, yeah, so the short answer is I'm happy to open it up, have people take a look at it. Um, there's some hacky stuff that I did, to be honest. Like, um, everything works. This part right here, the embed code still isn't working properly. I just basically copy-pasted a whole bunch of code for this domain, put it onto this domain. But theoretically, you could package up all the little, the small Web3 libraries uh, with, with, with whatever code you're fetching the videos with and then having it all bundled up here. Um, but everything else works and I will open source all of it. Cool beans. Yeah. I mean, video, video, uh, has yet to, uh, decentralized, uh, video sharing and, and uploading has yet to take off, but 
I'm sure it's it's ripe for disruption. So um, yeah, th this this is wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing with us, Hans. I, I appreciate you guys. Thank thank you so much for uh, taking the time and listening. I hey, I just have one more technical question. Sorry if you already went over this. Um, mm -hmm. So when when you when I go to the page and it shows me like the unlock or locked portion, mm -hmm. um, is is that a call directly to the smart contract that's like it's like stored in like in Solidity would be a mapping or like a, and Rust I assume it's like some sort of hash map structure that tells yeah you yes or no okay uh yeah, yeah essentially that's that's basically it um okay. yeah yeah more or less I, well yeah. so Solidity the contract and all in the same place so you use a map there Solana is mm -hmm. a little bit different uh you essentially create more sort of mini tables uh each account has a mini table so it's you could almost look at it as there's a record that I've said that this wallet address yeah. is associated with this, the, with the address of the video. And you can look at it as like a table entry. But okay. in, in Solidity land, you would use a map, I think. Yeah, yeah, it would be probably just a mapping. Yeah, no, that's that's cool. I was just double checking. Thanks. No worries. Just as far as a proof of concept of, of the loan, it's just amazing. Uh, I would honestly encourage you to keep fleshing this out. Uh, this could, you know, you could take this different ways. You could develop a, uh, continue to develop this out. You could even build a platform based, based off of this that would allow a lot of folks just to leverage this. There's folks that want to do something like this, but just don't have the skill or the uh, bandwidth to do this. You could probably go at a platform just to allow them to do this, to tie all this together. Uh, so yeah, please uh, keep working on this. Oh, I, I, I appreciate, uh, I appreciate that Jose. And uh, that gives me a lot of confidence. Um, I'll definitely, I'll definitely, yeah, I, I would like to work on this and appreciate, yeah, thanks. I'd love to see this on Ethereum now. Yeah, yeah I know. I, I've I wanted to, but it's it's just hard. Maybe someone can help me get it there. I'm sorry, I'm being so public about it, but like if you if you if you are interested um in having like somebody help you with the solidity contracts, um uh, this is really cool. It'd be a fun project. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Love to see it. Love to see it. Already the community coming together. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, we are at time, uh, unfortunately, uh, but uh, like I said, the, this was fantastic. Thank you so much again, Hans. I uh, really appreciate you coming on and showing showing this uh, to all of us. Uh, so just some final closing remarks. Uh, so next week, we have another great session uh, planned. Um, but for participants of today's session, uh, we have a awesome POAP uh, lined up for you, as well as, as, well as a special presenter POAP for you, Hans, that I'll share with you shortly after. Um, I fucked it up with the Deacon bot. Uh, I just have to finalize it, but uh, I will ping in the developer voice uh, text when it's ready for claiming. If it doesn't work, um, boo, I'll share a uh, 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 Google Sheets uh, doc uh, as a backup if it doesn't work but yes uh, this is this was another wonderful session and I will go ahead and stop the recording now